Do you want to go over the results of MASH 2023 and see how US students and IMGs did in different specialties? Let's not waste time and get down to it. I want to actually show you the information from the website itself which should be easier to understand. So if you go to the NRMP website, go here to MASH data and analytics, scroll down to residency data and reports, and here you can find the 2023 main residency match. We'll go over this one here, advanced data tables, but you have a lot of useful information here from the match of 2022. Uh, I love this one here, charting outcomes by US medical schools, uh, international medical graduates, DO medical schools. Uh, if you're an IMG, this uh, file would be very helpful. And we might make a detailed video about that. Before we go into the results of this file, let's go over this. A uh, graph which summarizes the results of 2023 match. So there was a total of approximately 40,000 positions and around 43,000 applicants. Let's go over the match percentages for US MD seniors who are US medical students in their fourth year applying to the match. Match rate was 93.7%, almost 94%. DO seniors, which are the osteopathic school uh, students, it's 91.6, so almost 92%. For US IMGs, which means they are IMGs with a US citizenship, the match rate was around 68%. For non-US IMGs, so IMGs without US citizenship, match rate was 59%. So you can see that the match rate of US IMGs is slightly higher than non-US IMGs, almost 8% more, but both US IMGs and non-US IMGs have much lower match rate compared to USMD seniors. Let's go to table two, which is actually the most helpful one for US IMGs and then US IMGs. So here you can see the different type of applicants and we'll go over them and the different specialties in rows. So there is the number of positions, number filled, and then MD seniors, which we talked about, they are fourth year medical students applying to the match, which is different from MD grads. So MD grads are US students who graduated from mid school and they're applying after they graduated. Unlike the MD seniors, which are students at the time of applying. DO seniors means they are students in osteopathic schools and DO graduates means they are those who graduated from osteopathic schools and applying to the match. Others, and these are probably the two most important categories for IMGs. The US IMGs, which are IMGs with a US citizenship, and then US IMGs who are IMGs without US citizenship. And this is the majority of IMGs. And here they give you the number of unfilled spots per specialty. I zoomed in here to show the numbers clearly. Let's go to internal medicine, which has the highest number of matches from US IMGs and then US IMGs. If you look at US IMG, 1,200 students matched into internal medicine. Then US IMGs, 2,659 students or applicants matched into internal medicine. And that is a huge accomplishment. Almost 4,000 applicants who are IMGs match into internal medicine. And if you look at the numbers here, this number combined is higher than MD seniors which means the number of IMGs who just match into internal medicine is higher than the number of US students in internal medicine. And that shows you the value of IMGs in the US healthcare system. What's shocking is that there were 380 spots unfilled despite having thousands of IMGs go unmatched. Let's go down to the second specialty with the number of IMGs, family medicine. There were around 5,000 positions. US IMGs filled 793 spots and then US IMGs filled 562, which again combined is higher than the number of MD seniors. But what again is shocking is that there were 577 spots unfilled despite having thousands of IMGs go unmatched this year. What's the reason behind that? Honestly, I'm not sure. If you have any idea about that, drop it in the comments below. Now let's go to pediatrics, which has a decent number of non-US IMGs, 400 and one non-US IMGs match into pediatrics and 226 US IMGs match into pediatrics. Pathology is another big one. You have 185 non-US IMGs and 63 US IMGs. For psychiatry, there were approximately 2,000 spots available. Out of these 2,000 spots, 149 were filled by non-US IMGs and 202 were filled by US IMGs. And although these are good numbers, we have almost 350. These are very low compared to the numbers of positions available, which is over 2000. Another big specialty for IMGs is emergency medicine. You can see that 289 spots were filled by US IMGs and 61 
were filled by non-US IMGs. What was shocking about emergency medicine this match is the fact that there were 554 spots going unfilled. And emergency medicine is actually the only big specialty that had more spots than applicants. And you can see that here back in table 1A, the total number of applicants was around 2700, but the number of spots available were 3000. What I also wanna show you is that there is no major specialty that did not have IMGs. I'm sure you've heard IMGs do not match in competitive specialties. IMGs do not match into dermatology or plastic surgery or neurosurgery. But I'll show you now the data that each specialty had multiple IMGs, not only one IMG. So look at anesthesiology. There were 58 US IMGs and 69 non-US IMG. Dermatology. So here it's 0, 0 because this might be confusing, but for dermatology you need to scroll down because dermatology is a PGY2 position through the match. So if you look at dermatology here, there were uh, 499 positions, so almost 500. Five were filled by non-US IMGs and two were filled by US IMGs. So seven spots went to IMGs. I know the numbers are very low out of 500, only seven, but it's still possible. It's not one who matched this year seven matched and to explain this dilemma about dermatology why it's a pgy2 position because when you apply to dermatology you apply for a pgy1 position through the prelim or uh, transitional year and you apply separately for a pgy2 position in dermatology so that's why the data of dermatology here is under the pgy2 but there are very few programs only 29 spots that are offered as a pgy1 position emergency medicine had multiple imgs Family medicine, internal medicine, intervention and radiology has three and six. Neurosurgery had one and 14. Neurology is another big one for IMG, 56 and 170. OBGYN, 49 and 38. Ortho is which is another very competitive specialty, eight and four. ENT, two and five. Plastic surgery, two and six. So eight IMGs just this year match into plastic surgery. Diagnostic radiology, you have eight and 13. Surgery categorical, which means matching directly into general surgery, not the prelim route. There were 77 and 95 IMGs who matched into this specialty. Prelim 73 and 186, but as I always say in my videos, matching into prelim is much easier because it's only one year. And there is a ton of spots unfilled, like here, 555 unfilled prelim positions. Thoracic surgery, which is another competitive specialty. Look here, only 49 spots. Five were filled by IMGs. Vascular surgery, out of 93 spots, four and five, so nine spots were filled by IMGs. Almost 10% of the vascular spots were filled by IMGs. Here you can see the specialties that are mainly offered as a PGY2 position. Dermatology, interventional radiology, you have three and seven. Radiation oncology, you have eight and 16. Diagnostic radiology, here you can see way more spots than the PGY1 position. You see some specialties are offered both as PGY1 and PGY2, but you would see more spots in one or the other. So diagnostic radiology, there is a thousand spots, out of which 52 and 21 went to IMGs. The numbers are low. That doesn't mean it's easy, it's hard, but still possible because more than one and two and three IMGs each year matching into these very competitive specialties. And if you need one-on-one -on -one advice on how to match into these competitive specialties, what is the secret? Don't hesitate to reach out to us on our website, thematchguide.com. We have our residency advising service in which we link you with a tutor who matched into a competitive specialty who is an IMG who can guide you through the process and help you achieve your goals. And I'll leave the link for our residency advising service in the description below. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope the information provided you some insight about the match process and how you should make your decision based on data, not on what people say. A gift for those watching this video and stayed until the end, you'll get free access to our USMLE journey course, which will show you the process that you need to go through to match into residency in the US, starting from the USMLE exams, what you need to apply to the match, including US clinical experience, research, going through the match process, resources that you need, for your personal statement, CV, interview preparation, and miscellaneous topics that you might find interesting as you go through this journey. And you'll find the link to sign up for this course in the description below. If you find any value in this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell sign so you get notified whenever I post future videos of my YouTube channel. Thank you everyone so much for watching, and see you in future videos. Peace.